now okay now i'm getting started it's uh, so so users of python okay you see this youtube is or was originally written in python and mysql right youtube okay look, look at the users i mean all all the powerful uh, you know all all the biggies are users of python dropbox web based file hosting is implemented using python both the dropbox server running cloud and desktop client software are primarily written in python so if you have used Dropbox, you know, it's, I use it. You see this? I use it all the time. So uh, Yahoo, Yahoo acquired 411 whose address and mapping lookup services were implemented in Python. Yahoo Maps uses Python again. Google, many components of Google Spider and search engine are written in Python. So the reason why people prefer Python is because uh, it's it's easier to code. There are a lot of packages already available. People are contributing to it, and hence, you know, all of these job corporation, ultra seek, Sophila, EM, you know, almost all of them, you know, all, not all, all of these are using Python, and there are many others which we have not mentioned here who are users of Python. Okay, is it bound to a value, or can be reassigned, or need to be bound to the original type? For the lifetime can only reference type compact instances. So uh, it is uh, okay. Le le let me try to rephrase uh, what you have said, right? Okay. Dynamic meaning is it bound to a value or can be reassigned or needs to the bound to the original type for its lifetime. In this in this sense, it it is then dynamic. Yes. In this sense, you know, it, it is dynamic, and uh, once you have set a value to a particular variable, or, or uh, you know, or uh, you know, yes, I think you have, it's it's dynamic. You know, that way you you can take it. And when when I'm when I'm ex actually explaining you the code, you know, like C and and small talk. Yes, yes, it's it's almost uh, you know. Many of the features were initially taken from C. Yes, you you'll also see that you know, C and Java is from from where uh, you know they started building Python. So it's it's more like C and small talk. Yeah. No problem. So we'll go here. Traditional uses of Python is uh, of course uh, scripting your C C plus plus program, C Python interpreter, right? You have. Uh, Again, a uh, Python in interpreter as well, and which will which will talk uh, during the later part, wherein you know you write your code in Python and then it gets converted internally into uh, into Java bytecode and then uh, it works works like a Java. So that is where you need the Python. So all this all this code that we write in Python, you know, is uh, is executed as Python. Uh, you know, you'll have to use the Python interpreter. To execute this in Hadoop, okay, because at the end of the day, the entire base on which Hadoop is built, you know, is on Java. And guys, I'll be uh, referring to Hadoop and uh, you know, big data a lot more because the course has been intended. Uh, you know, you know, the intention of this course is not just Python, but to give you a you know a background of how Python is used with big data. So. Python code, the interpreter will be used as Python, and then you know will be and and we make it work in Hadoop. You have C Python, you have script.py. So this is how you have uh, you know the Python extension is .py. As you have already seen that Python is used in image processing, in artificial intelligence, NLP. You know all this has different different packages. So like artificial intelligence have, uh, has NLP. Your uh, GUIs, Tinker, GTK, Windows. Now for GUIs, you can use uh, Django, right? You have database. There are some. There are a lot of packages available for data, database, image processing, system utility, utilities, internet scripting. Uh, like you know, the first page itself of this PPT. You know, we saw that it's mostly used to create the HTML content of uh, of of an uh, web page. So, so these are the traditional uses of Python, but it's not limited to this. It's it's much more than this. Uses of Python in data analytics. I think this is where you'll be more interested. Now, weather forecasting. Now, okay, we'll, I'll I'll cover that. Weather forecasting, scientific analysis, ad targeting, risk management analytics. Right. So let me 
take one example. I'll go through this and then uh, you know I'll ask you a question. New use cases of Python are the major growth driver for increasing demand of Python skills, right? New use cases are maybe you know uh, the advent of big data, right? The advent of Hadoop has led to increase in the demand of Python skills. Okay. These use cases are emerging because of various reasons, one of, uh, one of which is new packages that were added onto standard libraries such as Paidu, Panda, SciPy, etc. Now Paidu is uh, the package that is used for Hadoop, right? You can execute your Hadoop uh, directly from Paidu, your Panda, SciPy, etc. for uh, machine learning and uh, you know it's, it's more like a replacement for Mahout inside uh, uh, Python itself. We'll see how to use them in, in further classes. Now, guys, do we know what, what an ad targeting is? I'm a, I just want to give you a brief idea of what that is and, uh, and, and move on. I'll not talk about everything because, you know, weather forecasting, everyone knows that, uh, you know, we get minute by minute data and then based on this huge data set, uh, you know, we, we, we forecast or we predict uh, as to what is going to happen uh, maybe tomorrow, the day after tomorrow. Uh, when when is the monsoon of uh, mon uh, when is the onset of monsoon and uh, you know how is monsoon getting delayed etc that those are all weather forecasting scientific analysis it's used to analyze uh, even your med you know medicine and a uh, lot of things okay but let's let's talk about ad targeting here okay targets the part okay ragendra says it's target the particular audience anthony recommendation engine okay Okay, Naveen says uh, showing of ads based on customer previous viewing. Okay, like people between 55 75 for retirement benefits. Okay, okay. Amit Panda, ad campaign is done for target customer, right? So, I I wrote this program. Okay, wherein I mean not not a program. It, it was an entire project wherein we would uh, find out. Uh, users or a mobile phone user in a particular location okay now okay. I think I'm um, okay fine uh, so we wrote this program wherein uh, we would identify users based on uh, you know particular location let's say for example I have Walmart or Target you know this program is intended to be sold to all, all these uh, giants wherein they will know that who are the users in and around in the vicinity of that store maybe you know 10 10 mile radius or so and then they will be able to target this ad at those users i mean it's no point targeting ad to someone uh, let's say i am in austin texas and then i'm targeting an ad in india i'm sending an ad in india it's it's waste of effort right the, this you're trying to push in something to someone's mobile phone based on uh, you know lot of criteria maybe IME, IA address or, or maybe the IP address and so on and so forth. Right? So if you are pushing something from Austin, Texas, if you have a target store in Austin and then you are pushing that ad to someone in India, does not make sense. So using R you find out those outliers and something that, that is an interesting program but you know it's like you know it, it can target to that extent that it will know what your interests are it would have you know the program would have done analysis on and on your buying pattern as to you know if you log in in your uh, let's say computer and then you want to let's say for example you go into a, a computer and then you, you log into amazon.com website uh, you search for a nike suit right the next time maybe you log into facebook you would see that you know the same suit or maybe a reebok suit is appearing on the right hand side of the screen uh, on 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 your screen, and then it it will say that you know uh, Reebok is giving a ten percent discount uh, on this particular brand of shoes which you were trying to buy of Nike. So there are lot many ways that uh, you know this ad targeting is used, and and it's very interesting. You know, uh, I'll give an example here. You guys, would, all of you would have smartphones, right? Okay, I I have seen it. Okay, yes, I have seen it once. I started searching for Hadoop training. Yes, Anthony, and then you see Edureka appearing everywhere, right? So that that that's ad targeting. Now now that uh, you know you have clicked up to Edureka, you know 
you you see it everywhere go to facebook go anywhere you will see that right okay 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 great so so I was, I was talking about ad targeting wherein you know uh, I was talking about mobile phones okay look how dangerous it can be I mean the advent of big data there is no privacy at all okay so uh, many a times you download many of these applications from your uh, for, for your mobile right and then uh, you you say agree and allow right even without reading the entire uh, the, you know statement whatever has been written there how many of you guys have done that I'm sure most of you have done that right I mean you want a GPS application. You just download it and then say you agree even without reading it. And many a times you see that it says that I am going to read your call logs. Okay. I these days they have stopped it, but uh, you know at some of those apps will still have it. They say they say that we will access your call log, we'll access the data and we'll we'll store it, but then we'll not share it, etc. etc. They will give all those information. So what they do is when you download this app, let's say you, you download an app for Amazon.com for shopping. You downloaded that app. What Amazon would do is read all your call logs, okay? And then, uh, and then you let's say you start buying a Nike shoe. The next time you see your friends, your immediate friends and families have also started getting the same ad. You know how 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 does that happen? It's reading your call logs and then it's it's finding out all those people that you're calling, your close knit of people, let's say six to ten people that you call. Based on that, you know, this ads will be served to them as well. And then, you know, because you are buying a Nike suit, your friend is most likely, you know, might get influenced by you or, or buy the same brand or, or or same kind of product that you have bought, right? So that's the type of ad targeting that, that's being done. And all your data, each and every time you log into internet and you provide some kind of data or you have some kind of data in your cookies as well, in your web page, everything is stored, record by record. Someone out there, some program out there is analyzing your every step, right? And that's how you that's how you'll be surprised to see that many a times you might be thinking that you know okay I need to buy uh, this dress or maybe I need to buy this mobile phone and that the ad is already there and many a times it so happens that you know they they force you to buy even when you don't do not want by giving you like a ten percent discount twenty percent discount you know they force you to buy because it keeps on flashing onto your screen and you know it seeps onto your mind and then you start buying it that you know that's that's the level of uh, I would not say manipulation, but that's the level of ad targeting that's being done. And I can assure you, all of you uh, in this class, each one of your record is being stored by Google, Facebook already has your data, you know, uh, Twitter is already analyzing it. And every one of these uh, major organizations do have your data. And then if you are like a high brand, high net worth individual, you'll be getting a lot of uh, things based on the real data already available on social networking sites or, or elsewhere. A lot of research is being done and uh, I've been involved in certain projects so I know, you know, I, I used to work with a very senior data scientist, okay, and, oh, I mean almost, he was almost in his retirement age and uh, he never used to use a, a smartphone. I, I asked him this question as to uh, why he does not use a smartphone. You know the answer he gave me was, I design, I have designed many a, uh, you know, an, an application wherein people, you know, I, I just pull out uh, details of those particular individuals who are installing those apps, etc. You know, I do not want to fall in, on the same category wherein someone else will be analyzing my data, and hence he never used a smartphone. He used to use a basic phone. You know, those were days when I started working with him initially, and uh, uh, you know, he had he had worked in a lot of places. Uh, and then he had come out from there and then he used to say all those things to me. So, Okay, now moving on to our next slide, Python user for data, anal data analytics. Forecast watch is they use uh, this for weather forecasting. Okay, you can go to uh, forecastwatch.com for further information on uh, data analytics on weather forecasting. You'll also get huge sets of data if you want to write your program. Okay. If you want to write your, uh, let's say, complex program or you want to have huge sets of data, 
that that will also be available here uh, or you know if if you want you can send us an email we will provide you not just i mean we'll give you a link where you will be able to download the gbs and gbs of data for your analysis app nexus is a real time online advertising platform company uh, uses the python programming language to help conduct heavy duty data analysis these are again examples altas los alamos right so you see the scientists in the theoretical physical division at los alamos national laboratory they are using python to control large scale physics scores on massive parallel supercomputers high end servers and clusters so basically python is used everywhere 